everybody, I am Nico D. So in this video I'm gonna talk about Armbian config. So this is a very useful tool, certainly for Armbian beginners. You can do a lot with it, you can install a desktop with it, you can install onto an NVMe with it or onto an EMMC. You can update the software, you can overclock, install programs, you can do so many things with this. So I'm going to start with an Armbian Buster Legacy image. So without a desktop to show you how to install a desktop onto it. So I'm gonna use the NanoPi M4 for this. My NanoPi M4 version 2 has died last week. So I will have to install a new image onto my NanoPi M4. So I downloaded the image and burned it onto my EMMC. I plugged the EMMC onto my NanoPi M4 and I booted it up. And so the first thing I had to do is of course create new password for the root. So two times a new password. Then the username. So for me that's NicoD, of course. Then again two passwords for the user, NicoD. And then my real name is NicoD. Okay, so now we are locked in with root. It isn't advisable to use the root to do much, but we can already open Armbian config. So we do not need to use sudo for now because we are already with a root. So just Armbian dash config. And I haven't got ethernet over here, so I have to connect with Wi-Fi. So the first thing we are gonna do is connect the Wi-Fi. So we go to network and here to Wi-Fi. I choose my network and I type my Wi-Fi passwords. Okay, that is done. Now I'm gonna exit Armbian config so I can test my internet connection. So quits and I'll just apt update and I see that it works. I'm not gonna let it finish. Control C to stop it. I'm gonna reboot the NanoPi M4 and then we can log in with our user. So NicoD is my user. And then my password. So now to open Armbian config we need to use sudo. So sudo means super user do. This gives you a lot more rights to change things. So again we need to give our password. So I haven't updated the software yet. So I'm gonna do that first with Armbian config. So for that we go to system. And there we go to firmware. So this is just the same as doing sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrades. And just let it finish. I prefer to do this with sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrades because then you can see what is going on. So when something goes wrong you know what the problem is. So now we have updated and upgraded everything and we rebooted. So we again log in. So again NicoD and my passwords. And again to open Armbian config, sudo Armbian dash config. So now we can install our desktop. So for that we again go to system. So here we have got a lot of things to configure our system. So the first is install, to install to an NVMe or EMMC, freeze to freeze our kernel. Nightly is to have the latest configurations and then all the rest. What we need to install our desktop is default. So we go to install desktop with browser and extras. And again let it finish, this will take some time. And once that is finished it will automatically boot into our desktop. So I've got an NVMe hat installed on my NanoPi M4 with an NVMe of 200 gigabytes. So here you can see. I still have got some data on it so first thing I'm gonna do is format it. So I open gparted for that. Type my password. I unmount it. And I create a new volume. If you have got a new NVMe drive that hasn't been formatted yet, it is possible you have to create a partition table first, so you have to do that here. Otherwise it will not work to install to NVMe. So next thing to do is of course again open Armbian config, so sudo Armbian config. 
and there we go to system and then install and here we got two choices right now so boot from sd and system on sata usb or nvme so the sd is emmc and it will be system on nvme so the first choice and the destination is the nvme again wait until everything is copied and then reboots so if you have got a soldered emmc then you can install from sd card onto your emmc in this way so after rebooting if we now go to our file manager then we see that we've got 200 gigabytes of free space so that's my nvme and not my 32 gigabytes emmc so that's great that's a lot faster and a lot more space so a next thing to do is overclocking so you can overclock with ambient config you can also do it manually by changing ambient conf.txt in the boot directory but here we go to system and then we go to boot env so boot environment and we open that and here we see overlay prefix rockchip that means we can use overlays and the prefix is rockchip so if we go to our file manager and we go to our file system there boots then dtb then overlay there we see that we have got a few overlays that we can choose from so over here we've got rock chip rk3399-oc-20 so the rock chip we don't have to type because it already is the prefix rock chip so what we have to type is overlays equals and then rk3399 oc-20 you can also clock it higher but i would not recommend to do this i broke my nanopi m4 is it because it was overclocked no but i did overclock it the week before so who knows maybe it was because of this i don't know but i ran my nanopi m4 for a long time at 2 GHz and I never had no problems. So I am confident that nothing will happen at 2 GHz. After rebooting and setting up my taskbar tools, we can now see here that it's clocked to 1.99 GHz instead of 1.80 GHz with the big cores and 1.51 GHz instead of 1.40 GHz with the small cores. So that's a nice boost of about 10% performance gain. So this is nice. So the next thing you can do with Armin Config is setting up your CPU frequency and your governor. And here to CPU. One thing that I often do when I am powering it with a power bank is clocking it lower. So clocking all cores to 1 GHz. So you can do that with this. So select maximum CPU speed of 1 GHz. And now you see all cores are clocked to 1 GHz. This way it will consume a lot less energy, so less than 1 amp. So that makes a big difference in power consumption. But if you want to play games, it is good to have a performance governor. So you can also do that with this. So select minimum, so the maximum, and then governor to performance. So now it is always at the maximum. So that's another thing you can do over here. So I think we've got it all here in system. So you can also install ZSH. And here we have got a DTC editor. This is a work in progress. And this is something that can fill a whole video. So I will not look at this right now. So if we go back, then we can go to network. Here we also can do a lot of things. So IP to set a static IP address. Disable IP version 6, then enable network throughput tests daemon, so iperf, so manage your Wi-Fi, install infrared support, Bluetooth, install your Bluetooth support, then advanced to configure your network manually, and then forget to forget all wireless connections. Then if we go back, then we've got personal. So here the first thing we can change our time zone. So I'm from Europe and Belgium, Brussels. Okay, so locals, here we can change our locals. So for me it is English UK. 
so go down and English GB so I select this okay and oh English GB UTF-8 so the next thing we can change is our keyboard so generic and instead of US I'm gonna go to other and choose UK and the first and then the host name we can change that so let's do M4 instead of NanoPy M4 it's shorter then the welcome screen you can change things over there that's not so important then mirrors to change your app server so I'm not gonna mess with that it works like it is so again back then last thing we've got is software so here we've got softy with this you can install a lot of applications it is very handy since a lot of applications aren't that easily to install with uh, apt so for example samba cups tv head ends sync thing hasio open hub next cloud open media vaults plex media server mb server radar sonar pi-hole transmission docker mayan edms so you see there's a lot over there then here we've got some monitoring to check the cpu frequency and so then we've got benchmarking so this will run sbc bench then diagnostics to send it to Armbian, then headers install to install the kernel headers, then source install for kernel source, and full to install full firmware package, so to install all drivers, RDB remote desktop access, then Thunderbird for email clients, GIMP is a photo editor, then LibreWriter or the suit, the full suit LibreOffice. So that's it for software and all that rests is help. So here you can see some useful URLs and I'm gonna add a URL to that. So there is an Armbian swag store. So swag.armbian.com There you can buy all kinds of Armbian swag. So I've got a t-shirt from Armbian. If you want to support Armbian, this is the way you can do that, or you can of course donate. Armbian is planning to remake Armbian config, so to restart from zero and rewrite everything. This is because there are a few bugs in it and it is hard to have an oversight in it because it grew way too much. So that will cost money. If you want to support Armion, please do. Thank you for that. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all like my video. See you all later. Bye.